Hello, and welcome to this Experian Hitwise Christmas webinar. My name's James Murray. I'm the Marketing Research Analyst here at Experian Hitwise. And today, I'm going to be taking you through a summary of the online activity over Christmas 2011, highlighting some of the key trends we saw this Christmas in retail, but also in some of the other areas online. Just to remind you, this is the third and final part of our Christmas webinar trilogy. We started this process back in November with our predictions of what was going to happen in December 2011 and then followed that with our second webinar in mid-December which concentrated on the pre-Christmas shopping cycle and preparations for the post-Christmas sales. This third part of the trilogy is a roundup of all the key events we witnessed this Christmas and even though it's early no doubt some of you will already be thinking ahead for Christmas 2012 so we'll be forecasting what we think is going to happen next Christmas as well. You can find all of these webinars on our YouTube channel at Hitwise UK. So the big message to take away from this webinar is that this was the biggest Christmas ever for online retail. Despite the worries about tighter household budgets in a year of austerity, visits to online retailers were up by 4.8% this Christmas compared to last year. Just to put that in context, that 4.8% increase means we saw 100 million more visits going to retail websites in December 2011 compared to December 2010. I mentioned earlier that we made some predictions about what was going to happen this Christmas online. Hitwise has always been a brilliant reporting tool which can give you an extraordinary amount of data and insight looking back at what has happened in the past. But what we really wanted to emphasize this time was a different capability of the tool. So this year, we've used historical trends to forecast what is going to happen in the future. To that end, we predicted in November that there would be 2.1 billion UK internet visits to online retailers in December, and that the UK would spend 350 million hours shopping online this Christmas. So how close were we? Well, when we looked at the data, there were 2.18 billion visits to retailers over December and 343 million hours spent shopping online. So in fact, there were more visits than we expected but less time spent online than we originally predicted. I'll go into these numbers in more detail in the next couple of slides, but in essence what this means is that consumers are making more visits to retail websites overall but spending less time per individual visit. And this is indicative of increased browsing behavior between competitors' websites. Now, a part of the reason for this is that web consumers are becoming generally more savvy and price conscious and want to compare website offers to find the best deal that they can online. But this trend is not just limited to retail. It's something that we're seeing in travel, in automotive, in news and media, in fact, across nearly all of the major online channels. The message here is that consumers are becoming increasingly fickle. If they can't easily locate what they want on your website, they're not going to hang around just to find it. They're going to go somewhere else. So more than ever, your site structure needs to be easily navigable and you need to make sure the consumer experience is, in, is as enjoyable and painless as possible if you want to convert visits into sales. What we're looking at here is a daily breakdown of total UK internet visits to online retail websites over December. There are a few key events to be pointed out during December that are worthy of note. The first big spike of the month occurs on the 5th of December, which is Cyber Monday, the biggest pre-Christmas shopping day of the year. Cyber Monday falls on the first Monday of December, and this year we predicted record pre-Christmas shopping figures, as last year the snow had a big impact on retail delivery dates. So this year, we were expecting shoppers to be more organised and order their gifts earlier in order to maximise delivery time to get their presents before Christmas Eve. We predicted 85 million visits to retailers on Sumba Monday, and in fact, we were almost exactly spot on with 84.6 million visits, a new record for pre-Christmas shopping online and an 18% increase from Cyber Monday last year. Normally what happens is that after Cyber Monday, visits to online retailers start to drop off quite significantly as we get closer and closer to Christmas and delivery dates get tighter and tighter. What's interesting about this year is that with the milder weather across the UK and with retailers guaranteeing delivery much later in December than in previous years, visits remained quite high on the Mondays of the second and third week of December. 
Increased consumer confidence that the weather wasn't going to affect delivery dates meant that these two Mondays were over 10% ahead of the same Mondays in 2010. Then we come to this big spike here on the 26th of December. We predicted that Boxing Day would be the single biggest retail day of 2011, with 95 million UK internet visits to retailers. But it managed to surpass our expectations with over 96 million internet visits, making Boxing Day the biggest day ever for online shopping, an astonishing 19.5% ahead of last year's figures. Finally, bank holiday shopping on the 27th of December was also extremely high this year, with over 87 million internet visits. This was bigger than any shopping day of 2010, which really emphasises how successful online shopping was this year. Now I touched earlier on the fact that people were spending less time per visit when they were visiting retail websites. This chart here shows on a day-to-day -day basis how much time people were spending on average on a retail website. The first thing to point out is that the general trend across the month is one of decline. You can see that at the start of December the average visit time was 10 minutes, whereas by the end of the month that had fallen to under 9 minutes. Over the course of December, the average visit time to retail websites was 9 minutes and 26 seconds, down from 10 minutes and 7 seconds in December 2010. That means that on average, consumers were spending 41 seconds less per visit to a retail website. And again, this is a trend we're also seeing in other industries. As people consume more content online, they're making more visits but spending less time per visit, which means as an online provider, you need to work harder to make sure your customers stay on your website. A couple of other important points to pick out here. Sundays were consistently the best days with the highest average visit time. This makes sense as generally on Sundays, people are less busy, they have more time on their hands to browse and research online, but the data shows that Mondays were consistently the biggest days for online retail visits. So people spent longer browsing on Sundays, but made more visits and did their online purchasing on Mondays. It's also worth noting that the lowest point in the month was on Christmas Day itself. So even though there were record visits to retailers on Christmas Day, this also corresponds to when consumers had the least time to actually shop online. For those of you who watched one of the earlier parts of this Christmas trilogy, this chart will be familiar to you. But for newcomers, what this chart allows us to do is compare the online and offline shopping trends by combining our own data with offline retail data from our sister company Footfall. What this does is give a more complete picture of the retail industry over Christmas, as this blue line here measures Footfall to the high street and big shopping centres, whilst the red line shows Hitwise total visits to the online retail websites. The first thing you'll notice is that the high street footfall has its regular peak on Saturdays, which corresponds with the lowest day of the week for online traffic. Online traffic, on the other hand, has its regular peak on Mondays, building up to a pre-Christmas peak on Cyber Monday, which I've highlighted here in pink. After Cyber Monday, online traffic drops off incrementally until we get to Christmas Eve, before spiking again on Christmas Day and then Boxing Day, the retail peak of the year, which I've highlighted in this second pink circle. Offline shopping trends gradually increase in the build up to Christmas, and in particular, as we get closer to Christmas Eve, when there's much less chance of online retailers being able to guarantee delivery, this corresponds with the peak in high street shopping. You can see that in the last few days before Christmas, there's a cluster of very high footfall activity where shoppers are frantically doing their last minute shopping before the big day itself. Footfall then drops away to zero on Christmas Day when all the shops are closed before picking up again on Boxing Day and the 27th of December for the post-Christmas sales. I wanted to take a look at some of the key traffic drivers to the retail industry over December and in particular when retailers were most reliant on traffic from those prominent sources. Starting with search, retailers receive proportionally the most amount of traffic from search engines like Google, Bing and Yahoo on Boxing Day. We've already established that this was the biggest ever day for online shopping, but on the 26th of December, 46% of all visits to retailers came from search. Retail was reliant on social media most on the 22nd of December, and email on the 23rd of December, which made these excellent channels to promote post-Christmas sales. 
looking at the rewards and directories websites, which includes vouchers, cashback websites, and group buying sites like Proupon and Living Social, these were most prominent right at the beginning of the month, on the 1st of December. This represents early bird savvy shoppers searching for discount codes and deals ahead of Cyber Monday. So what were the most searched for products this year? Delving deep into our search data, I've compiled a list of the gifts people were searching for the most pre-Christmas on Cyber Monday and the post-Christmas on Boxing Day. And there are a number of interesting trends to highlight here. Firstly, top toys like Lego and also classic winter footwear gifts like Ugg Boots and Hunter Wellies are much more prominent in the pre-Christmas searches than the post-Christmas searches. And that's mainly because these tend to be gifts we buy for other people. And in the case of toys, gifts we buy for young children for Christmas, rather than for ourselves after Christmas. Secondly, electronics gadgets are more popular in the post-Christmas shopping period, in particular this year for the Amazon Kindle and Apple products like the iPad, iPod Touch and iPhone 4S, but also for consoles like the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. In the post-Christmas shopping period, we also start to see consumers searching for accessories to complement the gifts they've received for Christmas. So people who received a Kindle or iPad start searching for cases and covers, and people who received an iPod might want to buy headphones like the popular Dr. Dre Beats. Post-Christmas retail is also a key time for big ticket items, as these are usually heavily discounted. So this is when we see laptops, computers, TVs, and in this case, fridge freezers jump up the rankings. One of the unexpected trends that has emerged this year, in particular with the popularity of the iPad, is the creation of a new market insurance for expensive gadgets. You can see from this chart here that searches for all terms relating to iPad insurance doubled in the last week of December, after people had received an iPad for Christmas, and the top terms are listed here on the right-hand side. So far in this webinar, I've talked about the retail industry in general, but I wanted to take this a little bit further and talk about the difference between multi-channel and online-only retail. It's probably worth explaining first exactly what we mean by this terminology. Multi-channel retail refers to the websites of retailers that also have a high street presence, so the likes of Argos, Debenhams and Next, Online only, as the name suggests, is for those retailers that only have a presence online, including the likes of Amazon, Play.com and ASOS. Now about five or six years ago, before multi-channel retailers really caught on to the benefits of online shopping, we used to see Christmas retail dominated by the online only retailers. In recent years, and certainly in the last three years, multi-channel retailers have always been ahead of the online only retailers in terms of market share of internet visits. This trend is slowly changing as the retail market matures and online only retailers consolidate, and as we've seen with Amazon's acquisition of Lovefilm, for example. What's happening is the gap is narrowing between multi-channel and online only retail. And this year, that gap has shrunk from 1% of all internet visits to 0.66% of total internet visits. If we look at that same data on a more granular level for daily data, you can see that in the pre-Christmas shopping period, multi-channel and online-only shopping are very closely competing. And it's only really around Boxing Day that multi-channel pulls away from the online-only retailers. Essentially, this is because it's quite difficult to recreate that post-Christmas sales feeling that you get on the high street, rummaging through the racks at Next and picking out a bargain. The multi-channel retailers do well here because people research ahead online before going into the high street shops to do their sales shopping. What we definitely have seen in recent years is that searches for post-Christmas sales are starting earlier and earlier in December. At the peak of search demand, nearly 1% of all searches conducted in the UK contained the word sale or sales. But crucially, the uplift in sales searches begins in the week preceding Christmas week. So this year was around the 17th and 18th of December. And it's a key time to get all of your organic and paid search campaigns in order to capitalise on sales search traffic. This word cloud works as a nice illustration of how people search for sales online. 
you can see immediately that the most popular sales are for the big department stores, the likes of Next, Debenhams and John Lewis. But there are also a lot of searches for generic products like clothing, shoes and furniture, but also for branded items like Barber, Mulberry and Ugg. One of the important trends to look at is to see how sources of traffic are changing to the real sale industry. We've already talked about the growing importance of search, but this highlights how retail depends more on search traffic this year rather than the last year, with a 43% of all traffic coming from the search engine in December 2011. Retailers are also seeing an increasing amount of traffic coming from other shopping websites, which, as we mentioned before, towards the beginning of the webinar, is a strong indicator that browsing between competitors is increasing. Email as a channel is having less of an influence than it was last year, but this still represents a great channel to manipulate in order to talk directly to your consumers. Entertainment is also a growing channel, and as we've seen in our online video report earlier this year, video websites like YouTube are starting to deliver more and more visits to transactional websites as marketers implement video into their digital strategy. Whilst we're on the subject of entertainment, it is just worth looking at the top TV hits online this Christmas, as more people are being driven to catch up services like iPlayer and 4OD. The big draws this year being Downton Abbey, Doctor Who and Sherlock. What's interesting here is that even though the Barb figures show that Downton Abbey was the most watched TV programme on Christmas Day, our data shows that ITV Player was not nearly as popular as BBC iPlayer on Boxing Day, the day after the Downton Abbey and Doctor Who Christmas specials were launched. In fact, iPlayer received more than five times as many visits on Boxing Day as ITV Player. However, the 2nd of January was the biggest ever day for BBC iPlayer traffic, which is the day after the new episode of Sherlock aired on BBC One. 4.3 million visits to iPlayer happened on that day, and whilst we know that not all visits on that day were for Sherlock, it's certainly true that Sherlock played a significant contributing factor to iPlayer success on the 2nd of January. I spoke about how retailers are starting to use entertainment more as a source of traffic, and this slide highlights the top retailers that were doing that over December. It also introduces a new metric in Hitwise called Click Reliance. This uses the clickstream data to show side by side who's receiving the greatest volume of traffic from entertainment websites and then how reliant those websites are on the entertainment traffic they receive. In this case, you can see that of all the retailers in December, eBay receives more visits from entertainment than any other, but that there are three key retailers which depend on entertainment more than the competition. First up is Game the seventh biggest retail recipient of entertainment traffic, but relies on entertainment for one in six visits coming to that website in December. Secondly, we have Ticketmaster, the eighth biggest recipient overall of entertainment traffic. It receives more than 20% of all of its visits from entertainment. And lastly, Lovefilm, the 12th biggest recipient overall. Almost 15% of its traffic came from entertainment in December. And so here we have a gaming industry, a music ticket site, and a film website, all heavily reliant on the entertainment industry to drive traffic to their websites. The last thing I wanted to do today was give you some of our top tips on what we think is going to happen in Christmas 2012. Now because of the leap year, the days fall slightly awkwardly in December, and effectively that means that Cyber Monday is going to happen very early in the month which we're predicting will have a positive effect on shoppers as people buy their gifts earlier. This means that retailers will also have to start promotions earlier in November to grab customers on the 3rd of December. Boxing Day will once again be the biggest shopping day of the year for online retail, but because of the fall of the days, it's likely to be less significant than last year, and people are more likely to shop on the Thursday and Friday if they take additional time off work to maximise their holiday breaks. Because Christmas Eve falls on a Monday, this, this should be a bigger shopping day online, but it's also the last working day before the Christmas break for a lot of people, which means there'll be a lot of idle time at the office checking last minute shopping gifts, 
and in particular click and collect services could be very popular on this day. Christmas Day is also growing year on year and as a shopping day we'd expect this to be even bigger in 2012 than in 2011. So that's it for our final Christmas webinar. A few of the key takeaways from what I've spoken about today. Clearly, it was the biggest Christmas ever online and visits to online retailers were up 4.8% year on year this December, with 100 million more visits to retail websites this year compared to 2010. Overall, there were nearly 2.2 billion visits online and 343 million hours spent shopping in the UK. Boxing Day was the biggest ever shopping day online and we've smashed records not only for Boxing Day, but also for Cyber Monday, Christmas Day, and the 27th of December. Next year, we're expecting things to get even bigger and better. So online trends suggest that retail will be growing even more in 2012, albeit Boxing Day is not going to be quite as significant as it was this year. Retailers are going to need to start preparing earlier for the Christmas period, as Cyber Monday is going to fall very early on 3rd of December. Our final quick plug just before you go, all of the retail insights that we've produced today will be coming out in our Christmas 2011 retail review, which will be available to download from the website. You can also find additional insights on our Twitter feed, which is at hitwise underscore UK, and on our blog, which is on the main Experian website. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the webinar.